All right, what's up everyone? So today we're gonna to hit the road. We're gonna take a little road trip. We're gonna head down to Wexford and we're gonna pay a visit to go for games featuring the Retro Gaming Store. So you might already be familiar with the Retro Gaming Store in Wexford, but they've moved next door into a brand new premises. They've got loads more space. But just thought we'd take a little drive down, see how the store is taking shape, have a chat to Anthony, and get the shows around the new layout and talk about some of the plans for the future as well. So let's get moving. It's a beautiful day outside for road trip. Let's get in the car, let's head down to Wexford and let's get into this brand new store and have a look around. I can't wait to take us with me. Is there a giraffe just chilling there in the field? All right, so we've made it to Wexford. We're outside Go for Games, featuring the retro gaming store. There's the old store just here, and we're going to head in. and he's going to show us around the new store. Anthony, how are you? You well? Good, how's things? All good, all good. Delighted to finally be in, all yeah. set up in the new store. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger and a little bit brighter than I think the previous store. Yeah, <laughs> just, definitely, just, yeah. Just the difference when you walk in straight just away, it's just, it's just it's just the space, you know? It's just, yeah, and it's accessible for everyone. Yeah, exactly. Which the, is what we didn't have previously. That's the first thing I noticed, because I remember in the old store when you walk in, there was sort of there was like little hidden corners and stuff like that. It would yeah. be very hard to actually kind of get stuff out displayed and kind of move it around. So it's nice just to have this like nicely sort of frame space that you can just sort of line your walls and you fill the gaps in between. Like, well, we had know. a guy, one of our best customers, but he has a wheelchair, but it's one of those motorized wheelchairs. Right. Where he used to come up to our window and knock on the window and hand me a list. <laughs> right. And I'd go in and grab it from him and bring it out because, because he just you couldn't, couldn't actually physically get around. come in. And yeah. he's been in and around, just bombing around the place and Delighted it's so much, so much easier to actually see everything in person. Oh yeah, it's great. Yeah. Are they, is it lads are still kind of moving a few bits around, yeah. just like we're still literally, we're the still literally dragging things in from the, the other store. Oh, yes, that no, but the space looks absolutely great, yeah. I have to say. I don't know, will we just take a little walk around and kind of talk about like yeah. obviously people know that this is the first section that I'm going to be drawn straight to, as you know me, I love the magazines, magazines like, yeah. which we've actually still got upstairs five months worth of magazines still to put out, right? So there's so. another 300 magazines to come. I think we go back as far as I think the oldest one we have is an Amstrad one from 1983 right. and it's still sealed. Wow, okay. So it's actually kind of cool. Sometimes my collecting mind wants to keep it. Yeah. But no, it's going to it's going to come out. But this is where I'd struggle. This is where I'd be no good with somewhere like this. Like I'd probably I'd I'd either have to switch off completely or else I'd be looking at the whole shop as like my collection and every now and then I'd be like deciding whether I actually want to sell something or another. I think I did that for the first couple of years <laughs> but I've actually done exactly what you just said I've learned to switch off. Yeah exactly yeah. Uh, yeah. I think you have to because you'd end up nothing. <laughs> but when you do it as long as you do as well you probably realize stuff will go out but it'll come back in eventually you know yeah. so it's not like it's the last time you're ever going to see it so for me sometimes I just hold on to things because I'm like Oh, what if I never see this again? It yeah. could be like a game I picked up for three quid in the charity shop, and I'm like, oh, I, don't I think the last it. thing I really, really grabbed the moment it came in was Nightmare Creatures 2 for the PlayStation 1. Right. It's it's a rare enough game, not like massively expensive, you just don't see it that often. But it was the last game I actually needed to complete the PAL collection on the PS1. Okay, so. And that was it. Uh, I've picked up posters here and there that you don't see that often, or right. maybe an accessory here or there, but gaming wise, I've kind of eased off. Yeah. I'm kind of trying to separate that this is a business and not my collection. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah. Sometimes I do find myself paying my own money to buy my own thing, <laughs> uh, but it actually makes me not feel as bad. <laughs> so yeah. I'm taking money out, <laughs> taking money out of jail, basically. Oh, uh, stop! No, that would be me. And I, you've seen got like all these sort of frame posters and stuff. Are you saying these are actually doing really well for you? The frame prints are amazing. The quality is absolutely fantastic. We're really, really happy. Um, we actually use the same supplier that Forbidden Planet uses, okay. so we know they're really reliable. Um, they do other things as well, like mugs and posters, plus the frame prints that we actually just really love. No, right, yeah. And we we try and stick to gaming, but we get so many requests for movie and TV posters yeah, that we just up. we just got them in. Yeah, um, sure, whatever, whatever. And they just sell. We actually found that the gaming markets. They're the ones that actually sold quicker than the gaming ones did. It's crazy, isn't it? Um, which is crazy, but again, they're not something you see that often. Yeah. And. You no, know, I do love an L. I'm actually I have no space on the walls. Like I literally remember I put 
I've got four of those original Nintendo 64 posters. Yeah. They were like original retail posters. I've got four of them on the wall, two small frames, probably even maybe one around this size and one a little bit smaller. I literally have no room left at all. I've got so many like posters and so many. I love looking at your room frame. because it looks relatively so organized compared to. <laughs> compared to the dump that's called my gaming yeah panel. it looks it like the frame the frame behind me when i'm standing that's like that's the organized bit like but when you're kind of sitting <laughs> you don't want to know what's behind it or what's in the left hand corner yeah. like it's fairly it's fairly chaotic there's boxes everywhere because what happens with me as well is and this is a lot of things that like people don't realize when i'm trying to catch up on videos and stuff like that i was doing that last video and i was trying to show like I had that like you know that Nintendo box all the yeah. stuff in the Nintendo box I had like a blind box and stuff like that and like this is just like a normal double bedroom it's full of games there's like a coffee table there's like a my little office chair the back wall is full of like all the Xbox stuff and these boxes literally sit on the ground because in my head I can't actually open well I can open them and see what's in them but I can't actually put them away or add them into the collection until I've sort of like done it on a video yes because otherwise they get dissolved into the collection and they're gone forever do you know what I mean so the stuff literally just sits on the floor so it's so hard to even just walk around so that's why I need to be better I need to make more time to kind of just like because I yeah. try and get content done in advance but mm -hmm. a lot of the time I'll kind of record a video I'll leave the footage I'll leave the stuff up in the room and I'll go off and do another one do another one like this is probably I'm recording this now like I did went to Comic Con the weekend yeah. I recorded that like I was out game hunting last week I have a full game hunting video but I have like all the footage I'm out about recorded but I kind of leave all the room stuff down to yeah. like another day so I really need to kind of get on top of that because the stuff is just and I've got two I don't know if I mentioned this in the video yet or where it'll appear in the timeline or not, but I actually have two massive boxes on the way. Someone reached out to me, they had like, um, they were doing like a house clearance. They found PlayStations, games, consoles, boxed retro Walkman, all this sort nice. of stuff. So I didn't know what's in there. He said there's at least four PlayStation 2s. Oh, I can't wait for that video. There's all sorts of crazy stuff, so I'm really looking forward to unboxing that. That's so that'll be one that'll be <laughs> done fairly quickly, otherwise I'll be sitting on it for ages, you know? But these glass cases straight away when they come in, I know you've mentioned that you've got some sort of newer ones coming in that are going to be more floor to ceiling. We do, yeah, that'll actually fill the whole store. So it'll be kind of wall to wall glass. Yeah. On the side, on the sides at least. Which will be amazing when it gets there. Like, I think you know? what we've done that's different to the previous store is because it's a video game store and it's a retail store, we kind of got to take into account that the mums and dads and the kids coming in, the first thing they want to see is new stuff. Yeah. yeah. So we do have a real mix kind of right at the front so we do start with playstation 5 yeah and we kind of move on to switch but then suddenly we drop to like n64 and playstation 1 and we do have some of the box consoles above them and we kind of get older as we kind of go down we're yeah, moving down through the ages yeah but this is the sort of stuff i love seeing yeah, it's um, it's handy after behind lock of cases because the amount of times we had things taken in the previous store was yeah I can was imagine and we end up having to put them behind the counter where if you were sitting in the wrong position nobody could see them yeah so now they're like full on out I get you yeah so it's actually do you know what it's it's the best about words it's easy for people to see like they yeah. can see sort of pricing and stuff like this on all the carts do you know what I mean you can see the condition and everything straight away so yeah. it's ideal like do you know what I mean that you can go pick a few bits out and then. Just take them out of the case as you need them. I think my favourite thing is the fact that you can have the cartridges in and the discs in. Without having to go glass, through a filing without system. Without having to go through a filing system to actually find them. Yeah, I've I've, Which is, a, I've been there in the old job where we It was okay previously, but we've got to the point now at the size that we got to where it's impossible. No, you And like be, doing conventions, it's impossible. Having to put everything back in to bring yeah. it to it and take it back out, whatever Literally. comes back with you, like yeah. Okay. No, but it is. It makes a massive difference in the space. It really it does. does. Really makes it stand out. We do have. We actually got these stands made of Super Nintendo stands. There's a friend of mine who actually does. Oh, cool. like 3D printers. 3D printers. There. He's actually almost finished doing a life-size 3D print of Sonic the Hedgehog for just inside the door. Oh, cool. And he's worked. Then he's going to work on a Mario for the other side of the door. Right. So they'll welcome people in. <laughs> Deadly. That's what you want, yeah. That'd be class. We have the most used wall, which is Pokemon, which always looks like this because anytime you get a new release in, it, well, half the staff take the first half. That would look, yeah. That's, and then it's... everything else is gone within a day or two. Yeah, and like Pokemon is never something I've really been into, but lately I'm kind of 
I've seen you rip a few packs. I've ripped a few <laughs> packs. Did well out of one of them all right. You yeah. did, yeah. Got that into a top loader that's sitting on the shelf. That's it. It's going to send it off to be graded? Maybe. I don't know. Like, I know, isn't there talk of a grading service maybe coming in? There is. Out this um, way? We have, and it's a shame she's actually not here today, Erin. Okay. Erin is our trading card specialist where she's currently going through 26,000 Pokemon cards upstairs in the office right. that we took as a trade. Okay. <laughs> That's taking a while. <laughs> That's a lot. But we've also been buying singles and yeah. reselling and we've just agreed to do um, retail on slabs as well. So we're actually okay. going to getting them in for cosmic grading services to actually sell graded cards Class. in store direct. Um, we can also deal with uh, grouped cards to actually send off to be graded for people as well so we actually get a slight discount too for doing so so they actually can avail of the discount that'll be interesting you'll have to keep me up there in that because something that i actually do and funny enough i get messages about all sorts of things from people i really do but one message that comes in a good bit is people ask me where can i go to get like cards and games graded in ireland or at least close by and i'm like so, and we actually do value the cards as well okay we so actually it's do valuations like a full on cards and we do valuations on portfolios right, so that'll be the service for people to go yeah. to that and that are looking to get things graded and then we kind of this is kind of the part of the store where it isn't done um there's stuff out but it isn't done because this is where all the glass units are actually going yeah, to go I get there. You, so and right behind us on the opposite side as well so it does what it needs for now so it does what it needs for now just a few shelves up like, yeah. a few of the popular games out if somebody asks for something we're able to just run upstairs and grab it yeah um which is not ideal no but, but like you have the space here to grow but we have the space to actually do what we want to do and then the kind of most popular thing is these guys. Yeah, the I can arcades. imagine. Well, I've seen them when I walked in. Now. And especially the gun, the version. We actually have a dual gun machine as well. And oh, class. it runs everything from like, from Duck Hunt all the way up to House of the Dead. Sweet. And it's the most popular. It was broken. Well, the previous one didn't work. So we used that retro and Don from that Retro. Okay, yeah. And um, he did a lot of conventions kind of up to a couple of years ago. And amazing service, great guy. And funny enough, when you move on to the Space Invaders one, we've just finished a week long I've seen that you ran, a, you ran a tournament, didn't you? We yeah. did. Um, the winner got a PlayStation 5 console in store. Which is not a bad um, prize So it was all. a week long, com week long competition and he ended up with a score of 9940. And he beat the person in second place by 20 points. Oh my god, yeah. that's crazy. They were both here at 5 o'clock on the Saturday evening still competing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm surprised they didn't try and stay in the store 20 But I know, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know, you might see me having a little game or something here later on, but probably not in too much detail because I'm not exactly <laughs> still holding on to my arcade skills from back in the day. I'd like to think I still have them, but I don't know. And this is like our little Sega sort of wall over here. It is. We've actually got a D&D &D section now as well. Okay, cool. Um, we have so many people have asked us for D&D &D that we actually, one, created a section and two, we're actually going to be doing gaming nights, Sweet. which will involve Magic, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! and D&D. &D. And we're going to do console nights as well. And we're going to do arcade wars and stuff. So we actually do have a lot of night plans from October onwards. Um, ma Magic is actually the first thing that's going to come into store because we've secured a judge. And D&D, &D, we've two dungeon masters to work with. So we're okay. going to have D&D &D in as well. But yeah, our Sega wall, which is currently we have the games facing out, but we have enough games to actually turn them all in. Okay, cool. But again, there's some expensive games there and having discs in them yeah. is not something that's ideal because it's off to and the side of us where we can't see that well. Yeah. And Joe, it's probably not even having the discs in them. Like even with the discs aren't out and the amount of people that come in just assuming that there's like a disc or something in it, they'll probably just take it and run and then you're left yeah. with a disc only. And Which has happened to Dreamcast. Yeah. Um, one of the Dreamcast games went there last week and they tried to come back in the next day and say that we didn't give them the disc, <laughs> but they were actually caught on camera. How there's, a camera there's a camera right there. Yeah, how that inconsiderate of you to not leave the disc in the front of my Robin, you know? And then our Mega Drive section, which we actually took a trade in at IGM, with around, I think two trades in at IGM, when 50 games that are still upstairs. But we've got wow, big okay. hitters like Maximum Carnage and stuff and all still to be processed. All right, so. So that's going to be nice. And the same with the Master System. I'm actually upstairs at the moment pricing a Master System collection for somebody who's coming in tomorrow. Um, so that should be really good because he's got some really, really nice pieces. 
and he's a regular regular customer for buying and selling. Okay, so that makes it a lot easier to yeah. kind of process it and get a deal yeah, over the line exactly. as well, yeah. Having the office actually helps because I used to have to sit there and kind of people were coming in and out and it was just me. Right, and you're trying yeah. to price. And you're not now there's two guys here all the time. There's always two staff downstairs. Okay. So I can actually go upstairs the freedom to actually and run, and get and that run side the business. And on, like, yeah. So I actually get to run the business side of the business now yeah, for the so first time. It makes a massive difference. Like, it makes yeah, a massive yeah. difference. And then over here we've got a few like and then we have amiibo our, and stuff. We have our amiibos and our collectible figures. Yeah, we're familiar with these lads anyway. <laughs> we've got plenty of them in the... Oh no. I'll have to just pretend I didn't see these lads. They're gorgeous. I as can't well. even smuggle them out because Mrs. Vetra Games are in this with me. She yeah, dropped and there's, down. So. There's, there's the shield as well. Oh, that is class. Well, if anyone's watching this and they're looking for like a sort of an early Christmas present and they're looking for an old hint, <coughs> this could be something really, really cool to get me. But that's, it makes it easier, you know? That's it. What we've done with this center piece is everything's on wheels. So right, so. Moves. So we're actually able to fit eight to ten tables right through the middle of the store. I get that, that yeah, actually so you house. can kind of change things around as you need or as like exactly. stuff comes in. Uh, we can actually run tables through at night time. Okay, perfect. And so this is where you can have, actually set up if you want to do your... set up the whole way down. Your yeah. nights downstairs here as well, you can yeah, do it like, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That is class. And look, the old school posting, I actually missed this. The posters? I was only talking about this, yeah, we were in, um, I'm not sure what it was, it was, I won't mention it, but we are in this well, a well-known well retail chain. And you actually had this sort of stand where you flick through the posters and this took me back like when I was about 12 or 13 like I used to go into town and just constantly like go into maybe six or seven different shops like and just flick through these looking for it. I wouldn't even know what I was looking for, do you know, until I seen it but yeah I used to love kind of having a flick through and then you'd always like find the post you want and you go yeah. down here and it wouldn't even be there. I know, <laughs> I remember those days. I think I remember when I was about 14 dragging my mum around town, I think I was looking for like a poster of Alicia Silverstone or something like that. I think she was like the, she <laughs> the was crush the big, at the time. She was the big thing. Oh god, I had my mum's heart broken going around looking for it. Like, yeah, Clueless was not out that long. Like, yeah, and I was at that age where I was like, oh no, when you get a poster for the room. There was a film she was in that I actually there. loved called Blast from the Past. I think Oh, was, I remember it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to say Adam Sandler, but I think it's the other guy that looks like Adam Sandler. It could be Adam Sandler. I don't know, people will comment down below, they'll know yeah. anyway. I know when you're talking about love, it, yeah. love the movie where they thought the bomb had dropped on their house. Right, yeah, yeah. I do out. know the one. I, I, do you know what it is? And funny enough, when people talk about films and stuff like that, I can never remember if it's because I've seen it or because I worked in retail for years where we used to sell, like, stuff, like obviously back in the day, it used to be like VHS, then into DVD. Yeah. But I can picture the cover. It's like an album when someone plays like a, a song or talks about an album. I can always picture the cover on it, but I can't quite place who the artist was or something like that, you know. But I know because I physically seeing it or physically had it in hand you know yeah this is our this is our new home we spent 10 years next door so i'm hoping that we get the same result here yeah and take this closer to retirement yeah well that's it yeah i will just look it's an amazing space and as you said like it's only going to grow as yeah. sort of the months go by and stuff like that so but yeah thanks for showing me around anyway no problem at all. we'll pop around we'll probably get a little bit of b-roll probably end up saying one or two things that i won't be able to leave without but you look that's the nature of it you know you might have a little go of an arcade or something as well, but we'll definitely like we'll come back down um like that, maybe closer to Christmas or maybe in the new year or stuff like that when you've got your new glass case and stuff like yeah, that. Just to show the difference. Look, you can just picture look, how amazing it's gonna it's look. It's gonna, gonna look phenomenal with the glass units. Yeah. But yeah, no, it looks amazing. So congratulations anyway. I know it's been Thanks a long time much. coming. Great to see you settled in here and that's the best of luck with everything, yeah. Hopefully it really like takes off, you know. And we're five weeks open already since we came out. It's just gone by so quick. <laughs> I can imagine, it's crazy. And like we thought it'd be quiet with school, but it's actually not because the school kids are coming in here on their break and right. after school and it's right there. Yeah, well, I can imagine, yeah, but you look. You grab a kind of monster from, grab a kind of monster from the front of death. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, well look, yeah, it happened, it does it.
Get around, Joey. I'll do it 50 times. Thanks. So we made it home. We're back up in the game room now. Really enjoyed our little day out there. Enjoyed our time walking around Wexford Town. Had a nice spot of lunch and really, really enjoyed the little tour around the retro gaming store. So thanks again, Anthony, for showing us around. And of course, we came away with one game. I swore I was only going down to film, but I knew once I started walking around, I'd see something that I had to leave with. Mentioned it towards the end of the video, but we left with this copy of Defender of the Crown. Just something that we have nice memories of playing as a kid. Still don't have an NES here. We're waiting to get a little retro corner set up so we can get the CRT TV and get a few of the old consoles set up there. But this is one that really fond memories of playing this game. And a really nice box as well for something that's like, I don't know, over 35 years old now. So we'll have to get a little protector on that and try and keep it looking nice. So yeah, we had to come away with something. So yeah, we'll have to get that space sorted. Hopefully by the end of this year or early next year, get ourselves an old NES and get this popped in and have a game of it and see if it brings the memories flooding back. So yeah, as I was saying, really, really enjoyed the tour around the new store. Like we were saying earlier on, still plenty of room for it to grow. There's going to be a load of glass cases coming in, so both those side walls are going to be lined with glass cases full of games. What was on show there is only a fraction of the stock that he has at the moment, so if you're out that way, make sure and just ask if there's a particular game you're looking for, maybe phone ahead. They have a database with all their stock on there. Anthony is a walking database. He knows everything that's in there anyway, if you see him down there as well. But yeah, lots more games in stock there. But yeah, really looking forward to doing a repeat visit. As I said, we might get down this side of Christmas, but hopefully even early in the new year, hopefully when all those glass cases are set up and he has to store a little bit more filled out, we'll get back down again and have a look at how the place is coming along. But yeah, I definitely recommend taking a trip down there and popping in for a look around. As I said, the future is very bright for the retro gaming store. Lots of exciting events coming. They're going to have their sort of game nights, which we were talking about. We mentioned the service for getting Pokemon cards graded in association with Cosmic Grading. That'll be coming soon as well. So keep an eye on the website for more details of that. And the mystery boxes are returning as well. We forgot to talk about it in the video, but I can't wait to start getting my hands on those mystery boxes again. Really miss having one coming every month to open up because you never knew what you were going to get into it. Always full of some retro goodies and always great value for money as well. So yeah, really, really looking forward to those returning. But like I said, if you do get a chance, definitely get down and pay a visit and give them a bit of support. I can count on one hand the amount of independent Irish stores that actually sell retro games. And it's something that Ireland is absolutely starved of. Like we all know we've got CX in every corner. We all know what they're like. We've GameStop that pulled the plug last year. So the likes of Anthony's business, events like the Irish Gamer Market, other independent events that people put on every month or so are so important to the retro gaming community in Ireland. So please, if you can, get out there, support these events, support these local businesses, and lend your support to the retro gaming community here in Ireland. I'll do my best to raise awareness of the scene by visiting stores like this, going to the Irish Gamer Market. Like that Gamer Market video, for some reason, YouTube decided to pop it into the algorithm and we got something like 8,500 views, brought in 450 new subscribers. So there's a massive retro gaming scene here in Ireland. And supporting businesses and events like that only helps to grow it for everyone so like i said get out there support all these events and businesses if you can please support the channel if you know anyone that you think might be interested in watching these types of videos feel free to get out there and share it make sure you're subscribed all these things really help to grow it and hopefully i can keep bringing you these types of videos where we kind of pay visits to these sort of businesses events and stuff like that and keep raising awareness for the retro gaming scene here in ireland but yeah that's it for this one hopefully you enjoyed it. something a little bit different hopefully you enjoyed a little look around the retro gaming store plenty of videos coming up we made a visit to comic con we're going to do a little sort of a pov walk around from there we've got lots of game hunting in the bag we have two absolutely unbelievable boxes of games to come as well i can't wait to show you what's in those so make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss all these videos that are coming up but thanks again for watching thanks to everyone who stuck this far till the very end and we'll see you in the next one cheers i think oasis are the soundtrack to every road trip in ireland at the moment all right we're finished jumping on the bandwagon back to basics here now Just to give you all an update, we're on My Tears Ricochet now. Absolutely banging road trip music here. <laughs> we get back here, we line up.